Okay, so the Pacific Dining Car. That's our next one. Because sometimes you need a piece of beef the size of a softball at four in the morning. The Pacific Dining Car. This is one that's not only on, but also has a chopping block. (laughs) (laughs) I hope that people could hear me roll my eyes. You didn't just roll your eyes. (laughs) But I hope that you heard an audible like... (laughs) You gave like a head shake of a dad whose son was running for president and just heard him like put down immigrants (laughs) on live TV. Like that's the head shake you just gave me. Oh, go ahead. Losing this would be like losing one of the the rib bones (laughs) of... Of LA and not in the Michael Jackson sense. Uh, you mean Marilyn Manson sense? I've heard it about many people. <laughs> Would it surprise you from either? When Michael Jackson died and when Marilyn Manson dies, I'm gonna like, can we make the autopsy public? <laughs> There's a couple things I need to just need to clear up. We have a limited window on this <laughs> and it'll drive us crazy for the <laughs> for thousands of years. Also, when Richard Gears dies, <laughs> I'd like can, to get a look in there. If we can take a look at x rays, that'd be really great. If we There's find a bunch of hamster skeletons in his stomach, we'll know what's going on. <laughs> And also, uh, <laughs> what was in George Michael's stomach? <laughs> it all began in the 19 teens in East Coast, USA. I'm not talking about George Michael anymore. Okay. An opera singer named Fred Cook realized that he wasn't actually an opera singer because he couldn't sing. This uh, feels like a long-winded pun it's because not, his name is Fred Cook. I feel like this is all just like a limerick you're look, making. I mean, like, oh, the real story is... <laughs> you can't write this. <laughs> yeah, the real story is... His name is Fred Beefcut. <laughs> so he knew it was time to quit, but he needed a new venture in life when one day it hit him like a freight train. What if I serve food to people inside of a freight train? He kept having <laughs> dreams about freight trains. What I'm trying to get at is he it was a disturbed man. The things he saw in uh, the Crimean War, I don't know. <laughs> they had eaten at a restaurant back east that was modeled to look like a train car and he decided, I want to live up to my name yeah. and Fred Cook and do that too. And Fred Cook, he did. He but- met his best friend, Fred Freight Train, and they're like, we got to <laughs> put our ideas we together. Get together. Do you know anyone named Fred Fry Cook? <laughs> And Fred Dishwasher. His middle name is Fry. And it's just a relative of his. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Little did they know they were related. <laughs> that they were cousins the whole time. We need Fred Server. We need Fred <laughs> Nature D. So he wanted to do the train, the whole train car thing, this time in California. Okay. So in 1921, he and his wife, Grace, a.k.a. Lovely, oh. moved to L.A. and had a custom railroad dining car built and set it up in their friend's backyard at 7th and Westlake. That's it wasn't of, a running one. It, it wasn't like the... Supposedly it was functional, but why would you... If you're building this for a restaurant, why would you make it functional? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it should just be lifelike, but not. That's weird we, because we I just went to Carney's right now, which was a Pacific <laughs> Electric train. It wasn't Pacific Pretenders Electric. It was just a red. It was, it was a red car. Why keep saying red car? It was a train. <laughs> it was from the Lunchtime Express, I think. <laughs> they made it bigger than an actual dining car, so it wasn't as cramped. But like I said, supposedly. It would, but yeah, why would they like? Oh, we can't have a freezer because we gotta have a realistic engine room. <laughs> <laughs> In these early days, they weren't a fine dining place, though. It which was surprising to me. It yeah. was kind of like a greasy spoon diner and they were most well known for their pies. Okay. That was kind of their thing. Then in 1923, that original plot of land they were on was sold. So they had to relocate to 6th and Wilmer at 1310 West 6th Street where they still are today. I bet it was pretty easy to move. That's what I was thinking. Just, <laughs> hey, lay some track. We need, we need Fred track layer to help <laughs> us move. That front dining room is that original building that they had. Oh, built. okay. So that the one that they wouldn't let us sit in for some reason. Yeah. Because we're not the mayor <laughs> we have no influence we're not blackjack as <laughs> the waiter kept referring to jack black as that's right but at a certain point they became known for something much more than just lovely's famous pies a uh, one day a uh, uh, one day a uh, one two <laughs> tuesday monday uh, jesus uh one two apostles one day or somewhere around 1927 a rancher from san diego came to town who knew everything there was to know about beef and fred latched onto this guy and learned how to pick age and dry beef so now the new specialty of the pacific dining car became their beef which fred went through painstaking efforts to make sure they had only the finest and became what might have been the first restaurant in la to serve dry aged beef which they would do in-house they would age all of their stuff Mm in-house and word got out about how good the beef was and people started coming into his restaurant asking the age-old question Where's the beef? I was going to ask that earlier, try to squeeze that in, but I knew that you must have put it in there. So. I was thinking of, I could say something about where's the beef right here. I think I wrote something about where's the beef. <laughs> I don't want to step on my own punchlines. That's what was going through my head. As I, was. I feel like you wrote that and then wrote around it. <laughs> 
all the research is based around that ability was, to just say where's the beef without it sticking out blank lines like a message written in invisible ink <laughs> and it's like one third down the page and i just fill in the words around it <laughs> it wouldn't be funnier if we say it one fourth into this it eventually got to the point where other restaurants in town would buy all the best cuts of beef from the markets before he could wow. so he decided to start getting his beef sent directly to his restaurant from the suppliers to cut off these who's trying to do this yeah uh, who? carney a, 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 uh, a carney or a coal yeah philippe what are you trying to you stealing my beef <laughs> you're just gonna dunk it in juice <laughs> No, the, the Iron Maiden is back. It's V-E day. It's B-E day. <laughs> As they got more established, they put in their first bar in 1933, complete with three stools. And in the late 30s, they added some of the other rooms that are there now. So they built, built upon it, much yeah. like a train car. <laughs> and this was during the Depression, and they knew how lucky they were then to be doing well in such a time. So whenever people would come in asking if they could do some work for them in exchange for a meal, which apparently happened quite often, yeah. they would tell them, just come back at nine in, at night when the staff was eating and they just give them a free meal no wow. strings attached which is pretty nice which yeah. I, I wish that was still going on and all leftovers they had around that time during the depression they donated to a mission to give to homeless okay. and people who just needed food which was most people so now the cooks also had a daughter named Virginia who married another man who had the last name Fred probably wished he had when he was wanting to be a singing star uh -huh. Wes Idol <laughs> Wes Idol was an electrical contractor but one time the cooks needed help in the kitchen so they asked Wes to help out and he liked it so much that he just stayed wow. until 1935 he decided he wanted to open his own spin-off restaurant Cook's Steakhouse then World War the second one hit like it still yeah, never so ended not. it hit and it never went away yet <laughs> The hits just keep on coming. <laughs> and Wes joined the army. And of course, he worked in the kitchen. During this time back home, during the, the early days of World War II, the first decade of World War II, <laughs> Pacific Dining Car actually had to switch their focus to chicken oh, wow. instead of beef because Why? of the rationing. Oh. Why? What, what do you think? Was They're turning beef into bullets? Ah, uh, uh, our old joke that you abandon. It's been a long quarantine. Mm, okay, you forgot how to be a host. It's fine. No, we forget sometimes. Well, I'm sorry. I'm all about gun control now. So <laughs> did we forget that running joke that I'm all about gun control? Yeah, that upsets me that I let that pass me by, much like a bullet whizzing by my ear. <laughs> so shortly after the war in 1947, Fred died because they turned him into bullets. And <laughs> oh, I did and write that down. So I didn't forget how to be a host of the podcast. Didn't I fooled you. <laughs> I made it offensive this time. I mocked a man's memory. So Fred died and Lovely took over the restaurant. She oh, wow. kept things running pretty much the same except she added a barbecue, a barbecue stand yeah. outside where you could just walk up and order some meat and sandwiches to go, which I think is a, a good idea Especially now. now, a yeah. great idea. But in 1960, Lovely was as aged as her beloved dry beef and she sold the place to Wes and Virginia who immediately proceeded to revamp everything. Okay. They got rid of the barbecue stand, they redid the interior and at last put in air conditioning. Swell. In 1964 their son Wes Jr. went on a wine tour of Europe and brought back with him a huge collection of fine wines that became the foundation of a wine selection that had the reputation of being one of the best in the city really? at this rest at Pacific Dining Car. Yeah. Then in 19 what's this restaurant called again? <laughs> then in 1974 was this Denny's something Denny's um, Subway Denny's or <laughs> Train Car Denny's <laughs> then in 1975 that's the name of my finishing move the Train Car Denny I just give you diarrhea then in 1975 Try fighting me with diarrhea you can't knock me out cold if you have diarrhea <laughs> then in 1975 Wes the first died and Wes Jr. bought the place from his mom and mm -hmm. decided to I'm gonna completely revamp it for the fourth time <laughs> pretty much Jeez. he said I'm gonna take it in a whole new direction so up until this point it was a nice restaurant but nice. it wasn't it Nice. <laughs> Other restaurants passed by and went nice. nice. <laughs> Go ahead, sorry, I cut but you off. It, be stupid. it wasn't a prestigious sort of place. It had counter seating. There was an open grill. So Wes Junior's vision was to turn it into fine dining. Yeah. Fine. fine. <laughs> Other restaurants passed by. Fine. fine. It used to be fine dining, and now it's fine dining. <laughs> this is when it became the place I would say it is today, but I guess the place it was ten months ago yeah. with the dark lighting, white tablecloths, and the red leather booths. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, it looked the part of what it always had been, which was a classy but unpretentious little oasis of elegance in a kindly, ugly, kind of ugly stretch of town. Kindly and ugly. Uh, kindly and ugly. A homely stretch a, of downtown A police Los station Angeles. with homeless people sleeping on the lawn. Uh, a hospital that's next door to a Whole Foods. 
<laughs> and that's why it drew in so many celebrities and powerful people for decades. Your Mickey Cohen, your Bugsy mm-hmm. Siegel, your Bob Hope, your George Harrison, which I thought he was vegetarian. Your entire courtroom of the OJ trial. Every single person who's ever worked in City Hall. Everyone would go there. It yeah. was a discreet and dark place where you wanted to go when you didn't want to be noticed. And a big part of that was the staff who worked there, who worked with the discretion of the butlers in the Eyes Wide Shut mansion. <laughs> like even when that guy was giving us a tour of the place, yeah. he wasn't like gossiping. Like he said like Blackjack is so nice. Yeah, Blackjack is very nice. But you know, he wouldn't say like oh, Orlando Bloom. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was kind of reading off of a fact sheet. He wasn't dishing or anything. Well, yeah. that's in the kitchen. <laughs> that's where Fred Dishwasher works. <laughs> and when they say fine but unpretentious, yeah. it really was. Yeah. That, like I was kind of afraid when we went there because mm. I was like, oh, I don't own a cumberbund. <laughs> yeah, I don't I, I don't know what fork to pick up for salad. Yeah. But it really it's just a restaurant yeah. that's really nice. Mm-hmm. And they didn't look down on you, which again I was yeah. sure they were going to. You came in your basketball jersey. My socks with sandals. Yeah. <laughs> I need protein. <laughs> it was one of those places where the waiters have all worked there for like a hundred yeah. years. They weren't actors who needed a day job until they got cast on The Bachelor. Mm-hmm. I, I almost read that until they got cast on Becker. <laughs> These were professional waiters. The bartender who helped us, Rafael Covarrubias, mm-hmm. he's 89 years old right now and he'd been there for 36 years Damn. working as the bartender there. He's a legend in that place and he also doesn't drink. <laughs> Which he, is how he became a legend. <laughs> he came here from Guadalajara and had been working in one way or another since he was 13 to support his 12 siblings. And I'm telling you all this because I want to get to this one quote he had about his dad having 12 kids. My father, excuse my English, he was a horny person. <laughs> yeah. My he favorite didn't hate quote. doing it. I gotta have 12 kids. I'm just reading off his tombstone. <laughs> so the restaurant's been in a ton of movies, including Training Day. Mm-hmm. James Elroy has it in many of his books, and he even got married there in 1991. And all this while you sit under a painting of a dog in Victorian clothing. <laughs> James Elroy has a documentary, I, I forget, like Dog of Death or something. But he has a conversation about Block Dahlia with the LAPD, I think the Homicide Division, when they're at Pacific Yeah, uh, uh, he shoehorns it in. Like me with a Where's the Beef? joke he shoots every book yeah you start with the reference (laughs) (laughs) you start at the place and then you go from there work the crime forward and backward (laughs) from the restaurant they eat at while they're trying to figure it out Uh, in october 1990 the santa monica location opened at 2700 wilshire and in 1994 wes jr's son wes three not wesley wes three three. was now in charge and his big contribution was making both locations open 24 hours a day 365 days a year before this they were only open 6 a.m to 2 a.m they also started offering a late night menu after 11 p.m that was much cheaper because make no mistake it's expensive yeah but another way to save is if you had signed up for the 1921 club which we did where they give you a free steak for your birthday mm-hmm. you just have to pay for your sides and for your decision to make your friends come with you and have to pay for <laughs> price because it's not their birthday i would every you should only be friends with people who have the same birthday as you yeah i agree with that i've met two people with my birthday wayne was one of them mm-hmm. another guy i worked for had my birthday and i shouldn't be around either one of them <laughs> It's probably best. For, for the best. Yeah. I feel similar. like if you have a same number day, all the people on the ninth. But can then go you together. don't get the free stuff. No, you, on, they all get birthday. that. What I'm trying to say, not birthday, but like birth number day. Like the See, you're talking about some sort of mystical thing. I'm saying <laughs> we can all go to Jersey Mike's on the same day and um, get our free sandwiches. What about like astrological signs? We all get the same. How often do Libras get free <laughs> Jersey Mike's? We're all Libras and we won't be paying for this dinner. <laughs> it's in the stars. <laughs> free dipping dots for <laughs> all Libras. And so that brings us to the year of destruction 2020. This past June, the Santa Monica location closed permanently, permanently okay. due to the coronavirus oh, after yeah. auctioning off all of their belongings, which was worrisome when this past September, the original location then said, we're auctioning off mm-hmm. all of our belongings down to the napkins. They were auctioning the two cows out front sold for $7,250 and a crate of their relish and jam sold for 530 35 dollars wow. and rafael covarubias himself i got him for 200 dollars. <laughs> him and i don't drink together yeah. we talk about horny dads <laughs> i was going to bid on a crate of wine stoppers uh-huh. what am i going to do with 70 wine stoppers from- i can tell you right now <laughs> buy 70 bottles of wine start, start drinking, drinking. <laughs> Get nice and fat. We all assumed the worst when this was going on, but Wes the Third assures us that this is not the end, though. He said everything they sold needed to be replaced anyway, and okay. he wants to completely redecorate with the money they made, but I don't know if I buy it. Like, oh, yeah. oh I, I hated that backpack of mine you threw on the roof anyway. I was yeah. 
yeah. going to get a new one. Luckily, the family owns the building, so that's why they aren't closed down completely. Okay, because they don't have to pay rent or anything. Exactly. Yeah. But West insists that this is a new beginning and not an end. For now, they're pivoting to online sales so you can order their signature baseball stakes to be sent to your home and they want to maybe start selling pre-made things in markets like Claim Jumper does yeah. and stuff like that, but here's big pearl bertha harbor. <laughs> pearl harbor again <laughs> but if you'd like to be able to sit in this place again someday you better start ordering a lot of fingerling potatoes from them online right now I, i'm glad i waited for the largest airplane the yeah. jumbo jet to fly over 